Bryant here. Welcome back to our next lesson in the Directus onboarding series. Today is all about building dashboards with Directus Insights. Um, I say this on every video, but this is one of my favorite features inside Directus. I think it's going to be tremendously valuable for you. Uh, Directus Insights allows you to build dashboards using your data with writing zero code. No more SQL queries. Uh, you can actually enable your team, your marketing team, your content editors, your technical team, your VPs of whatever. They can go in and build their own dashboards with the data that you have populated inside the Directus instance without writing any code. And I don't have to tell you how powerful that is. Let's actually take a look at it. So we will open up our example Directus project. And I've got a collection of some data here in a previous video or uh, one of the other videos, we generated a flow to do some seed data. Let's just uh, generate another quick batch of seed data. So we've got a lot to look at. All right, so now let's take a look at insights. It's over here on the left hand side in the module bar and we will look at uh, let's take a look at our sample content dashboards uh, so here we have a content workflow dashboard that i created for this sample project uh, just an overview of what is possible with directus so we'll see the number of articles that were published over time and it looks like i haven't done so well at publishing in this particular account uh, but I could see some metrics as we call them. So I could see we've got two posts in draft, one in review, three are published. And this is our list panel where I can actually get a list of items based on their certain criteria. And then I just have some alerts. So all this was set up without writing any code. Very easy to customize. When it comes to the dashboards, you've got a couple of options as to how you display these. Uh, you can do the fit to screen option, or you could go full screen, which is really nice if you want to display this on uh, a TV in your office or a, a flat panel on the wall. Uh, I can also set a auto refresh interval. So I can refresh this data every 10 seconds so you don't have to keep hitting refresh. This will eventually go away once we have uh, the real time uh, web sockets launched, but we're not quite there yet soon though coming soon okay so editing and creating new panels is really easy to do we'll just go in and edit and before we do that actually let's start fresh together this is the the first time that i've explored this data set you saw me just load in some events myself so let's flip over to the analytics dashboard um, and if you're following along with our sample project, you should have this same exact dashboard inside your account. Uh, and we'll go in and edit some panels. So we've got two panels that are already here. These are using our global variable. And it's a little more advanced, but basically what we're doing here is creating a global variable that we can use in our filters for other panels. Super handy to allow you to sort by sort and filter by different dates. Um, you know, if you've got like a string of text or something you want to filter for, you could do that as well. Uh, let's go in and just create our first panel here. So how about, uh, we've got some events. If we go back and we take a look at our event data, we've got a couple of different keys like payments, logout, cancel, got some timestamps, got some users. So let's go in and let's just show all the events that have happened over time. A nice graph or a chart. So that would be our time series panel. We will load this up and for our collection, we're just going to choose events. Let's give this a nice color, uh, blue, for example. And now we get into the time series specific items here, like our group aggregation, our group precision. Uh, so let's group these on the day. Like, I don't think it's necessary to drill down into the hour for this data, but we could also do something like the week. And all we want to do here is do a count of all the events. Uh, for the date range, let's do automatic based on the data, but you can preset this to whatever date that you like. 
Next, we'll choose the date field, which is going to be timestamp in this case. And for the value field, uh, this is going to be the, we're going to run the aggregation function on this value field. So let's just use the ID of that particular event. Uh, that's guaranteed to be unique. We'll count those as unique events. And um, let's see what this comes up with. So we'll just say events over time. Maybe we give it a nice header and icon. Choose a color for that. Excellent. All right, so now we can drag and drop to rearrange. And our engineering team, our designers are so freaking cool that if you snap the dashboards or the panels together, you could see that they, the borders fix themselves. So that's how <laughs> detail-oriented our team is. It's It blows me away every single day that I work here. So we've got our... Uh, events over time and we could see all the different events that happened on which date and what the count of those events were. Now let's uh, add a metric panel to track how many signups we got. Um, so we'll go back into our events and we want to count and we're going to use the ID field and we don't really need a sort here. But now let's go in and add a filter. So the key, we're going to look for sign up. So this is going to be our, we'll name this panel. Let's call it sign ups. Perfect. So let's drag and drop to rearrange this. Maybe we drag that out. Uh, let's do 10 wide. That'll be good. All right, so we've got sign ups. Now let's duplicate this and we'll do cancels. So we'll just change this. Key contains cancel. And we can make this red. So it's bad. Oof, I don't like cancels. All right, so those are some metric panels. And again, it's super easy to create these. We'll just drag and drop, stretch these out a bit. Great. All right. This is starting to look really nice. All right. So what are we doing next? Let's add in a something a little more fancy, maybe a donut or a pie. So we'll go in and what do we want to do? Let's do the events, but we want to see the different types of events or maybe the service that all these events are coming from. Uh, so we're going to go in. The function is going to be count. And let's see what this comes up with. Count of service. Let's make it a donut. We'll show the labels. Show the legend on the bottom. Let's see what we come up with. All right. So this is showing that 96% of our events are coming from the app and not the test service. Um, not necessarily a super helpful graphic, but it looks really nice on this dashboard. All right, so now let's take this up a notch. And, and right now you could see that if I were to change any of these dates up here, they don't actually do anything. So let's actually go in and adjust our charts and metrics here so that uh, these variables do affect the data that gets displayed. So for our time series, I'm going to go in to our filter. I'm going to click add filter and I'm going to use the and group. And then we're going to go in and add one more item here. We're going to say the timestamp is less than or equal to, well, actually let's do the greater than first, greater than or equal to I'm going to use that mustache syntax here, and we're going to say date from. And I'm just going to drag that into that and group so it does apply. And then we're going to say our timestamp is less than or equal to date from. All right. We'll drag that in there. So we've got to pass both of these conditions to filter the data. Let's see what we've got. Date to blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, what's going on here? So we've got no data, no data, no data. Let's go back to select January 1, see if that changes anything. No, set to now, no. What did I do wrong? Let's try to figure this out. So I've just decided to do a quick refresh and see what happens. I've got no data coming back here. Um, let's take a look. Let's just do maybe less than, greater than. And uh, it looks like our dates have reset. Uh, so maybe that's the issue. Of course, it's hard to run in a, any data between these. Let's open it up and see what we got. So we'll do set to now. That's good. Okay, so we're, we're populating some of our data now. Let's adjust the timeline here and see what happens. We'll go from February 1st. Okay, so it is updating correctly. Uh, just had a, a little hiccup there. So we got greater than or less than. Um, it looks good. And I could go in and actually apply that same filter. So I'll just copy and paste the raw value. I could go in and apply that same filter here. All right. And we'll say the key contains sign up. All right. So now we're looking at sign ups from this date range to that date range. And I would do the same thing to apply those uh, date from and date to variables to all the other panels that I'm showing if I wanted to filter their data by that specific date range. Uh, incredibly powerful. Um, let's go in and create one more panel here and we will do a list. So we just want to display a list of items. Let's just show the events. And we'll set a limit of 10. Let's go in. We'll allow inline editing so we can open those events up. And we'll add a display template. So let's just do the service dash key and dash timestamp. All right. Uh, for the sort field, we'll just use the timestamp and we'll sort from descending. So we'll sort first. Uh, we'll just say list of events. Nice. I've got an icon. Uh, if you add a note, giant list of events, this will display in a tooltip. So let's drag this down, stretch it across. Great. Okay. And then we've got a tooltip there is where that note shows. Everything is nice and tidy, except for that. Ben's going to get mad at me if I don't fix this one. All right. There we go. We've got our list of events. We can see those. If I click on it, I can see the data that opens up in a drawer. Uh, excellent. So that is a great tutorial on how to create dashboards using Directus Insights. Stay tuned for the next lesson. I think you're going to enjoy it. I'll see you.